It is Mailbag Monday, guys, and in this video, I'm talking more upcoming character rumors. We're talking changes to Blitz, and yes, we are doing the giveaway in this video, so good luck. I hope you win. Before we get into all that, though, I want to mention the sponsor of the giveaway and of this video, Clan H. Q. What is Clan HQ, you may ask? Well, it is a brand new, fully featured messaging app, and it is free right now on the Android and iOS stores. It has all kind of features that can integrate with over 75 different games, including Marvel Strike Force. You have a fully featured chat with stickers, GIFs, photos, badges, and more. You have a notification setting so that you can tag people and see everyone that reads your messages. You can store your game data right in the app so anyone that wants to check out your entire roster, they can do it with just a click of a button. And that's really valuable, guys. If you're an alliance leader or you are someone that is looking for an alliance, yes, you could find it all right within Clan HQ. You could find the perfect match with just a few clicks. And because the game data is integrated with the app itself, you could show off things like your total collection power, your strongest team power, and you could show it off to anyone that wants it right in the app itself so if you want to learn more about clan hq check out the link in the description they're adding new features all the time guys it's really good stuff and if you want to be one of the first to use it make sure you check it out but if you are ready to go into the mailbag right now let's go smash it Pally flying What is up, Valley Maniacs? Valley Flying here. I am back. It is Monday, and that means it is time for the mailbag where I'm answering your questions from the mailbag channel. Before we get into that, I do want to mention the other sponsors of this video besides Clan HQ. Blue Stacks, it is my emulator of choice. It is how I played Marvel Strike Force on my computer, and it is totally free for you to download. So check that out, guys. The link and the install does support the channel. And there is also a link for Patreon if you want to support the channel that way. I try to upload some videos beforehand uh, for some of the patrons there. And there's also a link for Valley Merch if you want to get some cool merch for you or your family. But with that said, let's get into the first question. All right. Let's say you and Casino are doing a Whale Wars. He yells boot. You hit the button and you see a gold orb fly up. Oh my goodness. And that second of all, who are you hoping with B? Of course, not Ravager Stitcher, because yeah, if you guys have seen any of the previous Will Wars, you know that I've gotten way more Ravager Stitchers than I want. Who would you want that first seven star to be though? So Red Stars, they are good on protectors. They are good on damage dealers. And for this one, I'm not gonna go crazy. I think I'm gonna go with my favorite damage dealer on my most used team, that BKE team. Rocket Raccoon, he would be my choice for my first seven star character. Nothing nothing too crazy here, guys. Real simple with this uh, answer. Next question, what is your opinion of them releasing four character teams like Military or Power Armor or Fantastic Four and giving the players the option to choose who to add for the fifth? Also a related question. So with Namor being the uh, leader of the Fantastic Four for war, do you think Doctor Doom or Silver Surfer would make them a great raid or arena team? So the second part question, the second question is actually related to a rumor that I think a lot of people have been hearing for a while. Uh, rotating that fifth to make the Fantastic Four good for a lot of different game modes. And overall, I like this. I like that option. It, it doesn't make you split up some of these iconic teams, like splitting up X-Men or splitting up Fantastic Four or whatnot, because you're keeping some of the core elements together. It would, it would feel weird to split them up, but you're also allowing that fifth. So allowing some level of theory crafting into who you're going to place into that fifth. So I do like it. And let's see what happens with the rumors on this, guys. I don't uh, know how true they are, but... It is something that I've been hearing as well. So we'll see what happens with this uh, and see what happens with new characters as they are released. Next question. Do you have any advice on how to create sustained motivation with regards to cardio training? And how does that apply to farming non-unique gear for materials? So I think they're totally unrelated. Let me answer that first part though first because some of you guys may not be aware my background is in personal training and getting people in shape. So as far as motivation for cardio, uh, for myself, I don't like cardio. I play sports that you need cardio, so I'll do the cardio 
to help make me better at that sport, but I've always not liked cardio. So what was motivation for me was really having a clear goal and knowing why I wanted that goal. So for sports, it was very easy. I had a game coming up. I didn't want to suck. And, you know, honestly, if you are out of shape and trying to play a sport, it's not as much fun as if you are in shape and trying to play a sport because you're playing it more effectively. So for me, having a strong why did motivate me to do cardio, even though I didn't like it because my why was bigger than my uh, resistance towards that cardio. So. I think that that has helped me and I know it helps a lot of uh, people. It's helped a lot of my clients in the past. So hopefully that will help you. Now, as to how that applies to farming in this game, I don't think it's related at all, but how would I best farm non-unique gear, the orange gear, basically get in a good alliance and raid pretty regularly. That's gonna be your main source of this non-unique orange gear. And if you really need something and you're short in it and you don't wanna wait for those raids, you could always get something in the war store or the normal supply store. But I personally, for the non-uniques, not rushing anymore. After Fear of the Darkness, you really don't have to rush too much. So I would just go with the raids and kind of be patient with it. That's, that's what I would do anyway. Next question, if Coulson comes out, which shield member would you replace? So you're actually gonna have to replace two shield members because you got Fury, you got Security, you got Medic. I don't think you replaced them. F uh, Coulson's gonna be in there. So then you have Operative, Trooper, and Assault, all vying for that fifth spot. And I think the one you wanna keep in there is Operative because she can remove buffs from the other team. But of course, we don't know Coulson's final kit. We have his kit that's been data mined, but as we know with Okoye, as we know with Loki, before he, those characters actually were released, the data mines kits change. So as of now, I say Operative, but uh, when we actually see Coulson's final kit officially announced, uh, that may change. Next question, what program do you use to edit your videos? I use Adobe Premiere Pro, along with some of the other Adobe products like Photoshop and Audition, but for videos, most of the time is Premiere Pro. Uh, next question, what factions would you like to see added to MSF? Black Order and Apocalypse and his four horsemen are at the top of my list. Need a few more villain teams to balance it out. I would love those. I, I think Black Order would be great. They were teased a while back in Thanos' original passive, which mentioned Black Order, but uh, it was changed to Cosmic and has not been changed back since. So uh, who knows if they're coming. Apocalypse and his four horsemen would be great as well. Uh, I've mentioned other factions like the Inhumans, A-Force, uh, there's, there's a lot of good factions out there, but for me, I think I'd rather see some of these more iconic factions like the X-Men or, you know, the Sinister Six villains. I, I'd like to see them more rounded out uh, because to me, those are the characters that I'm more familiar with that are more iconic from my childhood. So personally, I would rather see some of these uh, other factions that are in the game right now be more built out than have them add new uh, factions to the game. Next question, what is your most anticipated character you want to come to the game? And related question here, if you could add one character to the game that isn't currently being rumored to be coming, what character would you add and what team would they synergize with? So for this one, I'm gonna have to go to the Twitter account of Marvel Studios. And this was actually uh, tweeted out on Friday. Looks like we are getting series coming to Disney Plus for She-Hulk, Moon Knight, and Miss Marvel. So this sparks some rumors or at least some uh, speculation on my part. I wouldn't say rumors because it's just speculation, but of maybe some of these characters eventually coming to Marvel Strike Force. And I hope they eventually do come to Marvel Strike Force, but Miss Marvel's already in the game, so that leaves She-Hulk and Moon Knight. And, you know, for me, more Hulks the better, so She-Hulk is always an addition. But I really like Moon Knight, and uh, I've said this before, the, I don't, I'm not very familiar with him in the comics. Uh, haven't really seen uh, too much of him in other media, but I do remember him in some other games that I played. Future Fight, and Avengers Alliance Part 2, and I really liked him as a character there, so my most anticipated character right now is Moon Knight, and like I said before, it does change probably on a week-to-week -week basis, but Moon Knight, and I think he would uh, be a good replacement for Punisher in the Defender Squad. Obviously, we don't know his kit, but I, I would like to see him uh, maybe a part of that Defender Squad somehow. I think that would be an interesting addition for Moon Knight. Next question what determines which arena shard you're in so the way i understand 
that is you're placed into arena shard with players that started around the same time as you so you know a newer player they're not going to be able to compete in arena shard with someone that's playing a year plus so i think that's kind of a fair way to do it and from time to time i think they'll combine shards to make it a little more competitive second part of the question though do you do your arena battles right before the reward payout to punch up to the highest rank yes as often as possible but for me my arena payout time is at 11 o'clock p.m and a lot of times i'm going to end up falling asleep before that so in that instance no and sometimes it's a weekend 11 o'clock i'm out doing stuff and you know sometimes the game is not as high a priority so i miss it then too but as often as possible if i see that it is 10 o'clock or so and arena payout's coming soon i'm going to try to get up as high as i can because the way the arena works or at least it's working for me right now you can pretty much beat any team on offense if you have that ultron phoenix combo uh with some other characters of course so it's not as much about the team you're using on offense or the team you're using on defense because that team can be beaten it's more about the timing of your battles so very very important i think if you really want to get a high arena rank is just to uh time your battles correctly and playing very close to that payout time is a big part of that next question what are your thoughts on the boombastic milestones to unlock namor and quick answer that i like it i like blitz milestones where you win and get stuff for winning i like them next part of the question though do you know the reason we're not getting marvel 80th anniversary orbs in the red star blitz is this another bug so as far as my overall enjoyment of these blitz milestones though during the iron fist blitz this past weekend we would get some shards for that marvel 80th orb every single win so 50 or 100 was the norm once in a while though there was a thousand or a 450 drop and i thought it was fun you play blitz and you can open orbs by just playing your blitz battles now with this uh with the red star orbs and the premium orbs you're not getting that this, these milestones are not as fun so we'll see what happens when the next blitz comes out tonight but hopefully it is uh, more similar to what happened during the Iron Fist Blitz and not what is happening during the Red Star and the Prima Mar Blitz that's going on as I'm recording this. Next question, actually two questions related to Dark Dimension. First, uh, if Deadpool can be Gear 13, is he the perfect Fear of the Darkness character? I think he's a good Fear of the Darkness character. I think the perfect Fear of the Darkness character is Minerva, uh, especially with Star-Lord giving her energy. Deadpool, I think, will be good. You can't really dispel him because he converts that to health. He has some sustainability. He has some good damage on a couple of his moves. So he's a good, good character. Again, this is all hypothetical because you can't get him to gear 13. I think he would be decent in Fear of the Darkness, though. I don't know if he'd be the perfect character. Is there any plans for Phase 3 of Dark Dimension? Not that I've heard of, no rumors, no data mines, nothing on the next part of that. What could be the restrictions for it? So, in Enter the Darkness, the restrictions was based on star level. In Fear the Darkness, it was based on gear. So, uh, maybe a combination. So, maybe gear and star level. One thing I do hope they never, ever do. If they do plan on adding a third phase of Fear of the Darkness, make it based on red stars because that would be horrible since red stars are all RNG. That would, that would put it all out of your control. You know, if there's a way to grind which characters we had red stars on, I wouldn't mind that. But, you know, maybe if they add another one, it would be based on gear 14 or gear 15 and seven gold stars on the character. I don't know. But yeah, it, it, it would be cool if they add another phase because I, I enjoy Dark Dimension. Next question, also related to Dark Dimension, how often do heals fill back up? Now, I, I'm assuming you are talking about the heals, and if you are talking about that, they don't ever fill back up. If you want to heal your characters, you're going to have to spend cores. Now, if you're talking about the health, uh, you, that fills up every reset. So you could go back in, your characters get full health, and you could go back into your Dark Dimension node and start to chip away at it with the characters that you have now that they're all back at full health. Next question. Did they ever give us the rewards for the two alliances that finished the Ultima 7 raids like they mentioned? No, not that I remember. And I hope uh, they are still planning to do that. I hope that's not something that they uh, decided not to do and haven't made us aware of. All right, next question. And this one's kind of tough to answer without knowing where your exact roster is. Uh, just finishing up BKT, you want to focus on a good Alliance War team after that? Got nothing built up apart from Vision. Would you still recommend focusing on Power Armor or just go straight to Fantastic Four and Namor? Now, like I said, this is a tough question to answer because I don't know where your roster is right now. But if you have all of Power Armor unlocked, 
go with them. We're not going to be able to get the full Fantastic Four to at least late September based on the in-game mail that we saw. So, yeah, if you got Power Armor Unlocked, build them right away. That should be a no-brainer. They're a solid war team. If you don't, you could start working on Fantastic Four to build them. You're going to need to build Sinister Six and get the rest of the characters unlocked. But uh, this, is, this is a tough question. But just in a vacuum, I would say go Power Armor as of right now. But if all things were equal and they're all equally farmable, I would probably go Fantastic Four. Just because they seem like they're going to be more versatile outside of that game mode as well. Next question. Are they ever going to open the final Nexus chapters? Oh man, good question. I don't know the answer to it, but we're waiting for it. My, my assumption is always whenever they're going to release the raise the level cap to level 75 so whenever that is that's what i think they're gonna do the nexus but who knows who knows i have no idea all right next question still curious on which teams in the current roster are best for which challenges the tier 10 ones seem to be abating me i know this question has been answered before but that was moons ago we've had many additions since so i actually answered this last week but i think i cut it out of the video just i didn't like my answer and i still don't like my answer but I'm gonna answer it on the video just so you know I'm not ignoring you. But I don't really focus on these challenges. I focus on building for other game modes like raids, like war. And once my characters are strong enough, so with the protectors and controllers or whatever the challenges are, I'll go in and I'll just see if I could overpower it with that because you have unlimited refreshes for these challenges. It's based on three wins per day or three completions per day. You could attempt it as many times as you want if you don't complete it. So just I, normally what I did before I finished them is I just take in my strongest characters, see if I could beat it. I'd make a few tweaks on those characters and go in again. And if I can't, I just hit the tier below it. And I never really stress too much about these challenges. So I know it's kind of a crappy answer. I know it's not the answer you're looking for, which is why I cut out a video last week. But uh, I just go in with my big characters and hopefully could pass it. So uh, hopefully that helps you. But uh, yeah, make use of those unlimited uh, attempts when you're when you're doing these challenges. And uh, that that's 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 it. I'm gonna be unlocking Shuri on her next go around. My Wakandans aren't super impressive. With unlocking her, other Wakandans good enough that I should done a, dump a ton of resources into building them up. Currently, they're T96664. Alright, so they're good. But if they're one of your high priority teams, I hope you have a bunch of other meta teams set. Like your X-Men, like your Brotherhood, like your Shield, your Defenders. You have all that taken care of. Even a Power Armor team. I hope you have that one before you go Wakandans. Because I think there are better raid teams. The Wakandans were built as the best raid team. I don't think they're the best raid team. I think BKE uh, is better to them in, than in every single way. So if you already have all those good teams, then yeah, build the Wakandans because more teams don't hurt. But if you don't, if you don't have your meta team set, build those first and then come back for Wakandans. I don't see them as a huge priority right now, especially with the heavy T4 investment that you have to make into them. How does the ranking system work for World Warrior? For the 80th Blitz, we can clearly see the points for World Warrior. I can see just the ranking and the top 10 at that. It, it works the same way. I mean, the score is in, the scoring system is in the game. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, they haven't included what the actual score is, so you can't see it. And you can't see all the top 24 of uh, your 24 members of your alliance, just the top 16. So uh, kind of a weird system. I do like that they have the actual score for the other milestones, but I wish it was all 24 members and I wish it was the exact score for all of that. Uh, next question. Have you ever thought of growing a beard? You shouldn't shave until your next six star red star pull. It would be a good visual indicator of how bad red stars are. Oh, I am not the beard guy. I, I get a little scruffy sometimes, but I usually shave it. Uh, yeah, my wife doesn't like beard and there's things that are more important to me than, uh, growing a beard. So yeah, I don't grow a beard. Anyway, do you think more competition between alliances would be a good thing other than for war? Doesn't have to be competition. Maybe work with other alliances to complete something like a massive raid. I think uh, more competition, more uh, cooperative stuff would be good in the game. The one risk that I see 
is player burnout. I know that players are being burnt out right now that play in a competitive alliance just because there's so much to do and it takes so much time. So my worry with adding another game mode, if they're not gonna rebalance other game modes, is the time. So if they do that, I would like to see them reduce time in some other game mode. And I hope it has done well. But yeah, more the more fun, the better. And if this leads to more fun, I would be in favor of it. All right, next question. It's kind of related because this, this is also leading to a lot of player burnout and it's related to Blitz. Do you think Fox Next will ever update Blitz? I think making more Milestone will work wonders. It will help with the supplies grind for war and give people to push uh, for further incentive. So Cerebro did mention this in his conversation with Casino that he did, that it was something they were looking to do. So I hope that they do, and I do think that it will come. As far as when the update to Blitz will come, I have no idea, but uh, I think reducing the time it takes to Blitz will work wonders for uh, player burnout, well, like we talked about with the last question. I know there's a fine line that they're trying to reach with, uh, these, with the games to try to keep peak keep people engaged in the game by playing the game more, but also not wanting to burn people out so they quit and uh, you decreasing your player base. So I think it's a fine line and I think tweaking some things here and there might help to reduce that uh, burnout. Maybe, maybe making more rewards, maybe making more milestones is the thing to do it. But I think uh, reducing the timer of the cooldowns from two, from six to two hours uh, really led to a lot of burnout. So I think moving that back up to six hours would be awesome. Next question, when will there be an event to get more Thanos and Minerva shards? You know, unfortunately, I think they're getting the Black Widow treatment. She's been in premium orbs for a long time, or the rest of the orbs as well. But she's just been in orbs for a while, and I think that's what they might do with Thanos and Minerva. I hope they bring those events back. But uh, yeah, it, it doesn't look good just seeing the way that they've treated the Black Widow. So hopefully they change their stance on this and make them farmable soon. Next question. If you were to pick an opposite for Miss Marvel in the Heroes Brawler to lead a villain blaster team, who would you choose, new or reworked? So let's go into the game and look at the villain blasters that we have in the game right now. I think a perfect lead would be Ultron, but his kit is so solid already. And I don't think any of these guys here should be the leader. So for that, I, I had to think of what characters do I know of in the game that are villains that might have that blaster tag. And for that, I thought of this guy right here. Yes, Baron Zemo. I remember having this toy. Uh, when I was a kid, I had a Baron Zemo toy for some reason. And then uh, he was also in the MCU in that Captain America movie. So I think this would be a good addition to the game. And uh, he seems like he would be a good leader for a villain blaster team. And that, that, so that's who I would pick. Next question. Whatever happened to Cyclops? I don't know. They, he's supposed to come into the game. They never gave a release date. They still don't have a release date and he is still uh, coming sometime. Who knows when? What do you think about the idea of a Mega and Ultimus orbs giving you red star orb shards when they drop for a character at seven star? Instead of more Ultimus orb shards, it leads to negative progression. Yeah, the, the shards, they kind of are what they are. I mean, Ultimus is not a very good character. Uh, is not a high, highly desirable character. And I kind of like the idea of uh, Red Stars being in your control. So if they could find a way to implement this and find a way that we could grind these Red Stars, I would I would like that. Uh, maybe just in certain orbs, like you mentioned, Mega or Ultimus, that would be pretty cool. But if they found a good way to implement this, I would definitely be a favor of it. They definitely need to rework this Red Star system because right now it's so heavily based on RNG. And I want it to be based on grinding, but I don't know if that's gonna happen, but hopefully it does get some kind of rework, whether this or some other method. When will they come back with a block party event? I'm not sure if everyone had the glitch. So we actually got a response for this by CMS Rebro on a few different outlets. This is the one from Reddit. We are currently experiencing an issue with a block party event. It is possible it have to be disabled for the weekend and it looks like it was disabled for the weekend. They're gonna run it again at a later time. I would expect that to be run this week sometime, but he did say that we're gonna update you with more information as it's made available. So who knows when uh, it's coming back, but my guess would be that it's coming back soon. All right, next question. When do you think we will get more Asgardians? Even Thor's passive leads to think that there should be more Asgardians. Now this was hinted at 
a while back when Cerebro did his interview with Casino. He hinted that as Guardians would be getting a rework, so would Thor. Or more as Guardians would be added and Thor would be getting his rework. No date was given, so this could be months away, this could be years away, this could be in the next update. Who knows, but I I think it will be in the next few months just because of uh, some of the rumors that I've been hearing. Nothing official, so it could be totally made up, but uh, I, I think it will be in the next few months or so. Next question, do you ever think we'll get new minions added to the game that work well together like S.H.I.E.L.D. or Kree? Might not be popular amongst the community, but I would be cool with it. Uh, here's the thing, I know that it takes Fox next a while to make these characters. It takes them months and months and months to make a character. So uh, I would rather have them spend time on adding more characters that aren't in the game. Some of the more iconic characters than some of the no name minions. I think having that minion team is cool, but not at the expense of other characters that I'd like to see, like maybe a She Hulk or a Moon Knight or more X Men or something. So uh, maybe way down the road after all the popular characters, but in general, I'd rather see more characters than minions. All right, next question, and this is actually a two-parter. First question is about Green Goblin. Who do I prefer to use him with, the Sinister Six or the Spider-Verse, and what will be his substitute? So I'll tell you the way I do things, and it's not necessarily ideal. So I think Green Goblin actually works better on the Sinister Six team. But I use him in the Spider-Verse team because my Sinister Six uh, is not that high powered. So my Green Goblin is way more powerful than my Sinister Six. So he ends up on my Spider-Verse team. With that said, uh, I needed a fifth for my, Spider for my Sinister Six team. And for that team, uh, I finished it out with the Thing. And that's who I'm replacing him with right now. And they actually do pretty good in their low level state at Blitz. They win up in tier eight in Blitz with that team because you know, even with the thing kind of sticking out like a sore thumb, he has enough stats and the rest of the members of the Sinister Six actually do have enough synergy to make that team work. But uh, yeah, I would prefer to use Green Goblin on my Sinister Six and not my Spider-Verse team. And then putting someone else in there or maybe slitting up that whole Spider-Verse team altogether. Uh, next question, what character between Rescue and Vision would you prefer to upgrade to T13 first? For me, it would be Vision just because he has a little more versatility. Rescue is a good character and is good to have the stats on. But uh, Vision works well in a bunch of other teams as well, so I would prefer Vision. All right, and that is it for the questions, guys. It is time for the giveaway, and for this, we are using the YouTube random comment picker. Got the URL in here. We have the hashtag, and the hashtag for this last contest, and it is for a $30 gift card for iTunes or Google Play. It is your choice. The contest hashtag was Valley Flying Contest. And I had to go in and approve all of these comments manually because for some reason, when you leave a hashtag, YouTube filters that thing out. So uh, I'll probably still do it in the past, but it's not the most efficient way to run a contest. But let's see how many unique comments where they were. They're gonna filter out the duplicate users and only the comments that have that hashtag are eligible. So there are 380 unique commenters and we will pick a winner at random. Good luck guys. We got another giveaway going on sponsored by Clan HQ later in the week. So the winner is Joshua Kirkland. Uh, hashtag Valley Fine Contest. Hashtag six star Kingpin. Hashtag six star Stitcher, oh, you know my polls. Oh my goodness. So yes, Joshua, you did win. Congratulations. Let me know if you want the $30 for iTunes or Google Play and leave a comment in this video so I could confirm it's you and then we'll reach out to each other on social media and get your email and I'll email you the code. So congratulations. And there is another drawing this week also sponsored by Clan HU guys. So make sure you check out their app. It is a good messaging system. And I will see you guys next time. Check out some of my other links in the description. Subscribe if you like this video. Share this with your friends. Smash on that notification bell. Ring that bell, guys. And I will see you next time. Hulk fist bump. Valley flying. Out.